So as you can see, there's a little bit, a little bit going on in terms of wiring. Um, there's also a bit of plumbing in there as well to add the, to the confusion. Um, I mean, wiring always looks like a jungle and it looks complicated, but if you just sort of follow it around and think about it, it's not as bad as it actually looks. Uh, and it helps when you sort of do it yourself right from the start because you just lay one step down at a time. Okay, so our system we're running here is, so we're running mains voltage, so in New Zealand it's around 230 volts. And we're also running low voltage, um, which is 24 volts in our case. Uh, low voltage is anything sort of under 50 volts. So for our low voltage, we're running things like our lights, like up here, a kitchen light. It'll be LED most likely. And then we're going to run some LED strip lighting down here. So one first thing to think about when you're planning your wiring is you want, it, if at all possible, to keep your high voltage and your low voltage separate. See, this is a good example here. So we've got a few wires coming in there. There's a couple of wires connecting up to each other to go somewhere else. And basically this here is a switch for a fan which is going up over there. You can see that wire ending there. Now we've chose to run our fan on 240 volts um, just because there's way more selection uh, to get, yeah, we'll be able to get sort of a cheaper fan and a fan doesn't use that much and we're just going to be turning it on and off like when we have a shower. So it's not going to be running that long. So we've chosen to go that way. You could run it 12 volts, 24 volts as well. Uh, anyhow, so we've got these wires. You can see them running around here and whatnot. You can see separated, where are we? So separated from those is another another um, flush mount box. So the light so the light switches will obviously sit on the other side of these. And then we've got some more wires, same sort of wire, coming up and over, and there'll be a light there. And then we come down and there's actually, we're going to have a mirror there and we've got the idea of putting some LEDs behind a mirror that's sticking out from the wall so it's, it looks like it's floating. Yeah, it should be epic. Um, but you can see we've separated, so that's what I'm trying to, trying to get to here. This here is all our, also the top wires. The top wires up here, also 12, um, 24 volt, and then they cross another 24 volt, so that's fine. And you can see they're separate, these ones here, uh, 230 volt. I mean, you get the picture, they're kind of separate. Um, you can, I think if you have to, you can run them across like that, if those were two different voltages, but it's not ideal if you can avoid it, just keep them keep them totally separate. In a movable structure or like a caravan, tiny house, it's gonna be potentially moving. You wanna use multi-strand wire. So you can see here that this wire's uh, multi-strand. It's made up of a whole, little, a whole lot of smaller wires all wrapped together um, as opposed to one wire. So the problem with one wire on a movable structure is potentially if it breaks, you're in big trouble. So this here, if it breaks, potentially one or two, maybe even three strands might break, but you've still got, you know, um, four left. So it's a minimum of seven strands that you need to have to comply in New Zealand. So that gets you down to a wire size like this guy. So that's a 1.5 millimeter squared um, wire. Um, and then I'm using 2.5 as well. So this is the same wire that's used in your domestic houses in New Zealand. Um, so it's commonly referred to for the wire size, uh, 2.5 twin plus earth, 
So that's a positive or a conductor and a neutral and an earth wire. So two cores, one, two, plus earth, three wires all together. And it's very similar around the world. Um, there might be different wire colours that there may not have any sheathing on it. It's the same idea. So something else to be aware of, and be very aware of it, if you're using polyurethane, so these are polyurethane panels, this is polyurethane expanding foam, you don't want to have any contact with the urethane with this wire, because over time, it might be a long period of time, that this polyurethane and the sheathing on this wire just slowly react with each other and it breaks down your wire and then you'd be in yeah, huge trouble. So, keep it separate. So I've run conduit, run, put a hole through here, run conduit, um, so it is separate and protected. This here is like a, a backing paper when they do the mould release, so, so that is not in contact with the polyurethane. I've been doubly sure here where the bit of the foam's gone over. I've just put tape there to make sure. And here I've made cuts through here. I'm just taping it up just to be overly cautious. And then we're using these little, these little pins. Seem to work quite well for us. And just put them in. And they hold your wires. So you don't want your wires all flopping around everywhere, especially when you're moving, because uh, it's going to create noise and put stress on your wire and then we've done we have I'll just show you more on those little clips they're quite cool so these come from Mida 10 you can get them from anywhere so they're just little clips like this that come on a roll they're pretty inexpensive too So, and you just wrap them around the wire and chuck them in. Like if you're banging them into wood, you bang bang them in first, then wrap them around the wire. So then we've then for a safety measure, we've, I've made up. I mean, these are the homemade stuff. Put these plates over the connection over the joins on these cavity battens. Now this here is, well it helps hold the wire in place as one, and secondly, when we're putting the ply on, if we accidentally shoot a nail or a screw into here, it's going to bottom out on this and not go through the wire. So that's the last thing you need is um, that going on after you've got your ply stuck down. And we're using standard house flush mount boxes. And we've just screwed those into, in our case, like the plywood here. And in some cases, I think we've covered them all up, we've actually um, actually cut out a hole here and glued them in and with the polyurethane foam. And they seem strong as. They just need to be located strong. So your, your um, socket plate screws into that, like, and that's your finish. So I've tried to bring these out flush. All the stuff that's uh, 230 volts is yeah 2.5 mil, and it's what you'd see in the house. And it's actually over the top for in here for the amperage we're running. Um, you could run 1.5. The reason we ran 2.5 is I just had heaps lying around, so we might as well use it up for um, free, basically. And just another thing to think about when you're doing like lights as you need fixing points for your lights so make sure you've got something for them and another thing I'd recommend is just test test all your wiring before you start lining uh, just make sure that everything's all good before you go because uh, you've only got one one shot at it so we're using a smaller gauge wire here so this here is just for a little uh, 24 volt fan and just an ignition on our gas 
stove. So yeah, that, that, that's so much smaller because the current going through that is very minimal. Uh, if you go to the electrical, an electrical seller of wire, uh, you can ask, or you can generally ask to take the whole roll, which might be like, say, 100 metres, and then you can use what you need over a few days, whatever you agree with them, then bring it back, and then it's got markings, markings there, see that's 17 metres, when it gets into focus. So that they, they know how much you've uh, used and can charge you appropriately. So we're not, not quite complete in here yet, but as you can see we've got that separation again. We've got the uh, 230 volt coming straight through the wall there and going into a distribution board, which is very much the same as what you'd have in your house. But I suppose a bit smaller. And then we've got the 24 volt coming out here, which I've still got to uh, sort out. And we're going to be running solar as well, but not right at this moment. So we've just got to rig it up to run through here for now. And then we'll sort out all the space here as room for our solar to go in. So here we've got the main switch that isolates the complete tiny house. We've got an RCA, which you have to have by law. There, so that's, and running off them is three uh, circuit breakers. And they're all 10 amps each. So I've actually made a bit of a mistake here. Uh, the caravan fitting I'm using is a female that's going on the caravan, or the house, but that's not what you do. So I've pulled that off, and you need a male. So a caravan always has the male end. That's what I learned after putting it in. Male, yeah, so it's in your caravan, and I've got a caravan lead here. Um, safety bit on there so that doesn't come, up, come apart and it's also got one of these on it so that's just a hook that's up high that's going to hold the weight of the lead so it's not yanking the terminals. So you need to earth the chassis, in our case we've got a steel chassis and the reason you do this, if you get an electrical um, conductor uh, touching the metal chassis, which is not a good thing but it could happen. That means that um, if that does happen, that the electricity is going to flow back to where it's coming from and not going to flow through yourself and to the ground.